so glad that she brought them out tonight. Amen. Moving on to our next speaker. And our next speaker will be talking about praying and the angels watching. None other than our MIT, Sydney Walker. Let's say amen. First, I'm giving honor to God who is the head of my life. Amen. First, I want to thank each and every one of you who came out to support us as a ministry. Um, I'm telling you, I am nervous, and this is not easy. But I'm going to let God have his way. Um, I would like to um, make reference to my pastor, um, Pastor Frank Jacobs and Lady Kim Jacobs in their absence. As well as I want to thank those of you who came uh, over an hour away just to support me um, from my home church. So I thank you, Lady as well. All right, so I'm gonna get straight into the word. So uh, the scripture that I'm gonna be uh, coming from is uh, Matthew 26 and 41. It says, watch and pray. Yes, uh, yes, you enter into temptation, for the spirit is indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. <coughs> so in this particular scripture, um, and I'm going right into the word. So in this particular scripture, God had went to uh, gather three disciples. Uh, he, he gathered Peter, Paul, excuse me, he gathered Peter, James, and John. So whenever he uh, gathered John, Peter, and James, I'm nervous, y'all, so you have to pray. So whenever he gathered uh, the three disciples, he took them up into the, uh, the mountain of Gethsemane, and he uh, asked them to pray with him. Uh, he asked Peter, he asked the three disciples to come over here and, and begin to pray while he wasn't feeling right in his spirit. And whenever uh, he wasn't feeling right in his spirit, he, um, while telling them to go over here and pray, he stepped off to the side and prayed. But before he stepped to the side and asked them to pray, he said, do not fall into temptation, for temptation is not the best option for us. So then at that point in time, while he, uh, when he stepped away to go into uh, his praying himself, um, he asked God, he asked those three to, um, of course, not pray. Y'all pray for me, y'all, because I am so nervous. Thank you. We got that. This is one of my uh, phobias of speaking in front of people, so. All right. So whenever he had, um, took the three up until Gethsemane to pray, he asked him the uh, three disciples to, to step over to the side and kneel down and, and pray with him and uh, watch and see what's going on. And when he asked him to, to go out and watch and see what was going on and pray, um, he stepped to the side uh, saying, hey, I'm going to step over here and pray. Many times we ask um, different people to pray for us, but not only can we ask them to pray for us, if we don't pray for ourselves, God is not going to move. We can't just step out in the midst of and ask somebody to pray for me and we don't put in work for ourselves. So what God took them, uh, what God asked them to do is go out over here and pray while I'm over here praying. And the three disciples, while they were supposed to be praying, ended up falling asleep. So whenever the uh, three disciples fell asleep and God, you know, came over and asked them, hey, you were not supposed to yield into temptation. So whenever the three disciples yield into temptation, he said, hey, you guys got to wake up. We're only supposed to be here for one hour. And this one hour we're supposed to be praying and fasting and uh, pretty much seeking God for his faith because uh, what, the feeling that I'm feeling is not correct. So he had uh, asked the three, hey, God, you got to stay awake and stay over here and pray. So whenever uh, God asked the three to pray, um, he left the three uh, disciples to go back and to finish praying. And once God uh, went back and finished praying, he uh, then asked the disciples, um, he went back to check on the disciples, and a second time, the three disciples had fell asleep. And once those three disciples had fell asleep again, once again, those three disciples had fell into temptation. Many times in life, we come across many things, such as there is food that gives us temptation, there are different uh, men and women that gives us temptation, there's different um, things that we want to do. Sometimes lying is a temptation, sometimes stealing is a temptation. We have to realize from God that everything that is temptation is not correct. So many times we have to go out and seek God, seek God's face, and ask Him to guide us through everything that needs to be guided. So these particular three uh, disciples went out and um, again they fell asleep for a second time and God, you know, went over and said, hey guys, you guys got to stay awake. 
hey, I need you guys to stay awake and pray with me while I'm seeking God's face. So whenever God went out and um, got us, so again, he, he walked off from them to pray for a third time. And the third time while he was over there praying, he went and checked back on those three disciples. And those three disciples, again, had fell asleep. So at this point in time, I come to tell you all today that whenever you have a temptation, no matter what your temptation is, you have to understand that whether your temptation is alcohol, whether it's marijuana, whether it's any kind of drug, you have to understand that if you don't fight that temptation, then the temptation makes you weak. So in this particular situation, these three disciples have pretty much lost against temptation. For those of you who don't know what temptation is, temptation is pretty much doing something that is wrong. Temptation is doing something that is not right. So in this particular event, the three disciples had did something that was not right, and it cost Jesus issues, it cost him problems. Jesus was supposed to be going down. He was supposed to go and be crucified in just a few days. So in this particular in, in this particular situation, we have to understand that whenever we're out there and, and we're supposed to be fighting temptation, though temptation comes, we have to be stronger. In the situation, in this particular situation, if those particular three disciples would have been out praying and doing what they were supposed to do, uh, these things would not have happened. I believe that it would have been a different story. It would have been a different scenario. It would have been a different uh, situation. So in this particular situation, uh, we have to learn as, excuse me, we as people have to learn that, um, we as people have to learn that whenever we get these temptations, that if we believe and pray and ask God, God gives us the gift of praying. He gives us the gift of, of knowing what's going on. He gives us the gift of, of praying and talking to him. But we have to have the faith and the faith to believe that all things are possible, no matter what's going on. And once we believe that all things are possible and what's going on, he'll send his angels to watch over us. And once he sends his angels to watch over us, any temptation, any trial, anything that we're going through, we can overcome that obstacle. We can overcome that temptation, no matter what it is, no matter who it is, no matter what is going on. So in this particular situation, I believe that for angel watching and the gift of praying, if as long as we pray and seek God's face and do what we're supposed to do, and we have faith to bring the two together, God will send us an angel from heaven to watch over us. Amen. Amen.